All right, so I have another video today on the Baofeng multi-pins and battery options. Uh, and I'm pretty excited about this one. Uh, and it has to do with like taking, taking it out and charging it out in the field. So normally you'd need to bring something like this big bulky base with you and either have somewhere to plug in this or some sort of adapter for like plugging into your vehicle or a solar panel or USB and then put your battery or your radio into the dock and charge it like that. Well, I was able to find this battery. I'm not sure how well it's going to focus, but it's a BL9. And the thing that's cool about this, it has a USB-C port in the back with a charge controller in it. Awesome. And this still maintains waterproofness. It's saying that, just to show, I'll remove. <clears throat> so on the specs here, I'm not sure how great the camera is focusing. It's saying that the USB-C one is a 2800 milliamp battery, whereas this one's an 1800, the factory battery. As I've shown in the past with some of these uh, aftermarket batteries, I'm not sure how true that is, but in this video at the end, I'm going to do a battery test like I did with the other one, where basically I'm going to put it, fully charge it, put it on FM radio, and then just let it play at full blast and see how long it lasts. But just to show you, I got this plugged into a very simple wall charger. You can see it'll show orange. And then when it's fully charged, it will show green. Now, because these have been sitting here for a little while, it'll show orange, and then it will pop up green because it's going to top off. Um, so that's cool. So look at this. I got this USB battery bank. You can plug it in and charge it off of that. Got a smartphone. If your smartphone is capable of charging other devices out of the USB-C port, you can charge off of your phone. Um, I have not seen that the battery from the radio can charge another device. Uh, it probably has some sort of in the controller. It doesn't allow it to send out. So if you were to leave this plugged into something, it's not going to like reverse charge and, can, and keep balancing back and forth. Um, some cheaper batteries with setups like this will do that. So for example, if you had it plugged into this setup right here, then this, charge this fully, then if the voltage got lower on this, it would keep sending power back and forth and charging each other and killing it uh, eventually. So this is really cool. Um, to show you compatibility here, we have a UV9G, clicks in, Channel mode. boots up. Have a GT3WP, frequency mode, boots up. Now, what it doesn't fit in, similar to some of the battery compatibility tests that I've showed in the past, with the older BFA58, there's a slight difference in the battery. Now, the difference is, is in up here, you might be able to modify this plastic a little bit and get it on here if you were trying to make this work with the older battery, um, because... The actual connection on the back is the same, but honestly, what I would do if you're looking to upgrade this is the A58, for whatever reason, Baofeng phased out. Um, I would just move to the GT3WP. That seems to be what they've stuck with. Um, it's the same body as like the UV9G and the UV9R Plus and stuff like that. Um, and it's been pretty consistent. So uh, very excited about these. So just going to do a couple 
non-scientific tests for you really quick here. Something quick I did want to show, uh, I just realized, is on the battery with the USB-C port, it does have the positive and negative terminals back here. When you put it on one of the regular charger bases, you can see it doesn't do anything. Uh, it's like it doesn't sense it. I wonder if just because they're using the same case that uh, they're doing that just because it's already fused into the case and it's not actually hooked up to anything. So what I'm going to do is get a multimeter here and just see if there's any voltage there. <clears throat> Okay, I got this on DC. Okay, I got this on DC. It's funny, it actually does show voltage. Interesting, I wonder why it won't charge it. All right, here's going to be the quick non-scientific test of the waterproofness for you. You can see I got the battery on there. Frequency mode. Oops. FM radio. So you can see the, now the speaker just got a little bit, because that always ends up getting water, but you can see the battery is pretty submerged. We're also hitting the battery. So the speaker got water in it. That's the reason why it sounds like crap. That's pretty common if you've ever done any of these type of tests, but it's working still. Now, one thing I'm actually curious to do that I have not done yet is to see how it will react with the charger. Let me put this in my little stand here. Yep, it will still charge. Oops, I hit a key here. But, and it will still operate. Everything's still operating. Well, that beep was for something else I'm gonna cover in a different video here. But uh, it will operate and key out while it's charging as well. So, good stuff. All right, this is fully charged. Speaker is still a little jacked up because of the water in there, but I'm going to put it on. Okay, it's all the way up, and we're starting it a little bit after 11.58. USB charging battery here is completely full. So I'm going to put it in. Frequency mode. 
Fancy mode. Well, left it on when I took it off, but anyway. Results are in. The regular battery lasted six hours and 40 minutes. The USB-C battery lasted five hours and 54 minutes. And like I said, this is not a scientific test. Um, I actually expected the USB-C battery to last not as long as the OEM battery. Um, this GT3WP that I'm using in the test is brand new out of the box. It was taken out, put on this charger, and set there for this test. Same thing for the USB-C battery. Now, the reason why I expected it to not last as long is if you think about it, same battery case, but they needed to fit in there the USB-C port along with a little chip for a charge controller. So, again, just me guessing without ripping apart the battery, there's probably one less cell inside of this thing to be able to fit the spot right here for the USB-C port and a little chip to control. Just my guess. My opinion, again, this isn't scientific. Somebody out there smarter than me could probably say maybe because when I started the test with the water in the speaker, the speaker wasn't moving as much, and that's what caused the battery to last. <clears throat> All that to the side. I don't trust what it shows on the milliamp hours on these, these Baofeng batteries, but even if it did last, let, let's just call it an hour less, I would still like the USB-C batteries over it simply for the fact that they're way easier to charge um, out in the field. Uh, there's plenty of solar options, battery bank options, instead of having to carry around something like this to charge it. So anyway, uh, just another option I wanted to show for these multi-pin radios out there. Not an exciting video, watching a clock go around in a circle and listen to me run my mouth about a battery. Uh, use the affiliate links in the video description if you plan on buying some of these. Hopefully, they won't take a month to ship on Amazon. If enough people start buying them, they'll be more readily available. Uh, let me know if you get these and like them in the comments. Uh, any input, any other battery options that you find out there and want me to try out. Hopefully, they'll get some extended batteries soon. That'd be cool.